Beloved is a series that takes us through the epistles of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And for part one, we're hearing from Adrian Singer, from our Walnut Creek area, who, by the way, is not a jerk. Mm. I don't know who tells you that you're a jerk. You uh, it's not true. One. Actually, I'll go on record. <laughs> I'll go on record. I, I'm sure other pastors are going to hear this, but you're one of the nicest ones we have. Well, I appreciate Let's be that. honest. Maybe we don't work enough I, together. Yeah, we haven't spent enough time together, apparently. Maybe not. Hey, uh, in the message, the first part, you talk about sin, you talk about fellowship, you talk about truth a lot. Yeah. Um, I love that part about a fellowship, by the way, being kind of like on a, on a camp staff or a church staff, yeah. working together, being on mission. And I love that we, as a, as a church now, are getting a lot of clarity about our mission, where we're going. So, uh, Cornerstone, fellowship. We really are yeah. a fellowship uh, like that. I love that. Um, let's talk about sin, though. <laughs> since, <laughs> since you're here, Pastor, let's talk about sin. You define sin as anything that harms others or harms our relationship with God. Is it really that yeah. simple? Yeah, if you look through the things that Scripture calls sin, it's always connected to those things. It's always connected to harming our relationship, our obedience, our faithfulness to God, or harming someone else, hurting someone else, um, and that's why when you look at love, love is doing good for other people. Because we remember that love is an action word. It's not, a, it's not really a feeling word when you look at scripture. It's about action. It's about doing good for someone else, whether it's good for us or not. Sin is not doing the loving thing. No, but okay, so let me just be honest with you. If I look at uh, the scriptures, you mentioned the scriptures, the Bible, if you, especially the Hebrew Bible, it sounds like it's sinful for me to eat lobster or to mm. to wear something woke how does that harm how does that harm me yeah how does it harm or to wear a, a fabric woven out of two different wait to wear yeah yeah different. cloth no, you know what i'm talking about yeah some of those things were absolutely cultural and some of those things were about obedience to god keeping keeping our commitment to god and and recognizing the holiness of god so some of them don't make any sense today okay but back then they were about protecting ourselves, keeping our, ourselves safe or other people, or making sure that we had the, in the Old Testament, appropriate reverence for God. And part of the new covenant is as Jesus on the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, when he talks about that, he starts to clarify and simplify what sin is and communicates that sin is when we harm ourselves, when we do something that harms our relationship with God, that breaks, the, breaks our fellowship. Mm -hmm. breaks our friendship with Jesus, or hurts someone else. And that's why, you know, I look at the Sermon on the Mount as one of the most important passages in all of Scripture, because that's what Jesus is doing, is clarifying and communicating, hey, this is what sin is, and this is why. Um, and so, you know, I, I always recommend people read through that and study that because it helps us to know who Jesus is, and it helps us to know who we are called to be as his followers, yeah. especially in regards to sin and love. You, you talked about John being, you know, this old guy who really had so much experience and spent so much time with Jesus. And he focused a lot on truth and defining yeah. truth and living in truth and being around truth. Um, I think you nailed the, the hammer on the head here with what we're dealing with in life currently, especially yeah. as Christians living in our in our culture in our society that we have to live out truth but who's going to define that for us because there's so many people who seem to know what that is and others say no truth is this yeah. and well i mean two things in regards to that i would say that the truth is defined by jesus jesus is the truth um, and we have to look at him for what he says is true and what's real and unfortunately i think even within the church we've made truth something abstract something philosophical, something out there, rather than the word for truth that we read is about being honest, being real, okay. being truth-filled. Truthful means I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I'm not gonna pretend to be something I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be self-revealing and honest and share the truth about what I know about Jesus and what I know about myself. It's, it's concrete. It's, it's very practical and very real and when we make it something abstract and philosophical that's out there that's malleable or something that only some people know, it's removed from our daily life. And that is the exact opposite of what John's talking about. Boy, do I love that. I love that because 
And also it scares me because I was like, <laughs> I was sitting, thinking about sitting down with you thinking what if he's gonna ask me really pointed questions I'm gonna have to be truthful about that, like completely truthful. Like who in the world do we get to be truthful with nowadays? Yeah, well I mean and I think that's the thing is we, we ought to strive to be truthful in every situation with everyone we can, but we also have to be aware that confession is me going to a friend and saying, hey, I need to talk to you about stuff that maybe I don't broadcast to everyone. Uh, now, with the days of Twitter and Facebook, unfortunately, we broadcast to everyone all of our junk, but confession is me going to someone I trust and that I know I'm in fellowship with, on the same mission and loves me, is a, is a friend. And I can share, here's where I have harmed someone else, or here's where I'm struggling with God. Uh, I know that love requires me to do this, and I just don't want to do that. And that kind of confession makes the load of being obedient lighter because now it's shared. And I also can get some great encouragement from you. But also the next step often is I need to go to Jesus and pray through that and say, Jesus, I don't want to do what I know you want me to do. Help me to change that. Mm -hmm. What know? an attractive way to live, Adrian. Because I feel a lot of Christians are really guardians yeah. of the truth and will yeah. attack you for the translation of the Bible that you're, right, right. Um, that you're using or other things that they're very convicted about that we need to tell the truth about. Yeah. And you're saying, no, how about we tell the truth about ourselves? Well, and that's, I mean, in scripture, we always read about truth and love. That's uh -huh. why, you know, when we, we see John link it over and over again, truth and love, truth and love, because those two things are supernaturally connected. I can't be truthful with you mm -hmm. if I'm not loving you. The truth then, or the facts that I have, become a bludgeon to beat you up with. I can't be loving to you if I'm not sharing truth with you. I have to approach you with both those things. I have to come and say, here's the truth that I know, and I share it out of love. You have to know that I love you. If one of those two things are absent, I'm just not being faithful. And I'm bringing chaos into your life. Yeah, it's tricky though, because oh, I yeah. could be convicted about the truth that I see in you, where you know you've got a you got a splinter in your eye, dude, and I need to I need to call that out in you, and uh, that's what we have. I think we have a, a lot of work to do. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, and that's where the honesty and confession comes out, is that being truthful about ourselves is loving. So if I can say, hey, listen, I absolutely struggle with arrogance, and I'm an arrogant person, but when I saw you talking to so and so, I feel like maybe you felt like you were superior to them. And I don't say that for any other reason other than I recognize it because it's so present in my eye and I'm trying to remove that log, maybe this is helpful for you. Yeah. But that's the whole approach. It has to be those two things of truth and love, truth and love. If one is absent, man, yeah. you cause pain. Well, this is helpful for me and I, I'm sure it's helpful for you as well. And uh, if you wanna uh, join us in that, this is something we're gonna take into our week to try to be honest with ourselves that we're gonna be honest with others and, and, and confessing our sins and, and confessing that, that, the things that we're struggling with. So I'm so glad that you were here. Uh, let's do this in community. Shoot me an email if you need help. Shoot me an e email if you've never really confessed certain things to anybody and I'll, I'll be a, a listening ear. Uh, we'll all do that in community. Cornerstone Fellowship is a safe place where we include everyone, especially people not like us. I'm so glad that you were here. May God bless you this week. In Jesus' name, amen.